trusty assistant. This is this is the dad, the dad O'Brien. Here telling the recreation. I'm gonna take the SD card. Okay, so I've just moved around. So here's one that you might recognize from some of my videos. And now I'm gonna upload the video to YouTube. Hello and welcome to this video. Today I'm gonna be sharing with you my process for filming and editing on a through hike. PCT last year and I decided to film and edit the experience while I was out there. In this video I'm going to go over equipment, apps, music and I'm going to run you through the entire process of making one of these videos. So before going out I thought long and hard over whether I was going to film everything and then wait till I got home to edit the videos, but I decided I wanted to do it as a little bit of a visual journal and have the story unfold in real time. Although I knew if I was gonna wait till I got home to make the videos that the quality would be better. I could spend a lot more time editing and do it on a computer, but there was something about the rawness of making the videos out there that I was really happy with. And also being able to interact with all of you as well on YouTube as I went through it, like the Q&As and all, uh, was pretty special. And things like all the voiceovers, they were all done on trail as well. So to me, it really did feel like a visual journal. And although it was really hard work, I'm not lie to you, I'm really happy that I've done it. I've gone back and watched these videos so many times and it really does just teleport me back to those moments. So I'm really happy that I did do it. The question that I did get asked a lot was, does filming and editing on trail not take away from the experience itself? And I do kind of get where they're coming from, but I'll also say that you're gonna be out there hiking like every day for almost six months. And you, at some point you're gonna feel really driven to make something, to do something creative. At least that was my experience. So in a way, I actually got more out of doing the filming than it took away from it. And also to put into perspective, you know, I would make a video say for each three to six day section, you know, that was maybe six days of walking for up to 12 hours a day. And in the end, the video was maybe 20 minutes long, so just to give a bit of perspective, it's not like you're gonna be filming every single second of every single day, at least that wasn't the case for me. And of course, there's gonna be some really special moments on trail too, where I just did not film because I didn't wanna ruin the moments. You know, if something like really magical is happening, um, you're not gonna just get out your camera at every single experience. So there was definitely so many times that I chose not to film because I didn't wanna take away from that moment. So yeah, I would say overall that I actually got a lot out of filming. I really, really did enjoy it in the end. And I would say that actually in contrast to the question, yeah, it did kind of add on to my experience. For example, you know, there'd be times maybe I would get up before everyone else and go and try get a really nice, time lapse of a sunrise while everyone else is in their tents. Day 150, don't usually record so early in the morning, but we have the best view of any campsite. 100 and, no, 360, it's early in the morning. <laughs> view of the mountains. Hey. Yeah, I kind of sometimes would say, you know, for a camp, do you know what? I'm gonna like climb up this little bit to get a nice shot. And it kind of pushed me to try and get to some places that I might not have otherwise. All right, so first of all, I'm gonna go into the physical equipment that I used on trail. 
I filmed on the GoPro Hero 9, eventually the GoPro Hero 11. I'm not gonna go fully into my issues with GoPro. You can hear about that in my post-PCT gear review video. Uh, yeah, I have a few issues with GoPro, but ultimately they are great cameras and the footage and image stabilizing of them <clears throat> is pretty amazing. That's actually what I'm videoing on right now. I took two enduro batteries. These are the white ones. They last slightly longer and they do better in colder temperatures. I found these to be great. Two was plenty for me, but I also did have a 10,000 milliamp power bank too and my little solar panel. I actually used a Tic Tac box to carry the spare one and I would put SD cards in here too. I brought a bunch of SD cards. What I would say is that for me, the 256 gigabyte one, that's as big as I would want to go because when you're loading the footage from the SD card to your phone, the more stuff that's on there, the slower it's gonna take for it to load on your phone. So I actually preferred using multiple 64 gigabyte cards Although the 256 was handy because I didn't have to change it as often, but yeah, I wouldn't go any bigger than that. I used a short tripod, just one of these. It's not the official GoPro one. I think I just got it on Amazon. It's really handy because you can extend it as well. So I actually used this for all those shots where I would set the camera down and walk away. And I think this was great. I also really liked it because I was able to slide it into my shoulder strap loop on my Osprey. So it was always there. Another thing about the GoPro that's really handy is with a phone, you'd have to get the phone out, open up the camera and film, whereas the GoPro, I would just click it and it would automatically start recording. i click it and it would turn it off. So I only had to press the button twice to film something and it was always there. So it wasn't too difficult to have to film something. I also use an SD to iPhone reader, this little thing here. Uh, oops, nearly dropped it. Uh, Apple do official ones. This is just one I got on Amazon for like a tenner. Did the job. What I really liked about this is that with the GoPro, you can transfer wirelessly to your phone. Um, but by doing that, you're then draining the battery of your GoPro and your phone. Whereas if you take the SD card out, put it in here, you can open it up on your phone and import the footage and then you're just using the battery of your phone and not two devices. Okay, and going on to the apps that I used, there was two main apps. For editing, I used KineMaster. I'm gonna go through and show you how that works shortly. I also used Canva and this was for creating YouTube thumbnails and I uploaded the videos onto YouTube. I also upgraded my iCloud space as well to try and back up things, but that didn't quite work, but we'll go into that later on. Music. I use royalty free music. This is the best way to avoid your video being taken down because of copyright laws. There's plenty of websites that you can pay a subscription fee to get amazing professional sound of music, such as Artlist and Epidemic Sounds, but I opted for free resources. My main sources for music are YouTube Audio Network. This has a ton of soundtracks and they're totally free. Kevin MacLeod also has some great music. With his, you have to make sure to credit. KineMaster app also has some built-in music. What I did was before I went to Trail, I pre-downloaded a load of music. So I just made a big folder full of all the music I thought I'd want to use and I imported these into KineMaster beforehand. So I'm gonna go through my entire process now. So number one, I would film short clips on my GoPro. Doing short clips is so much better than long clips. It's gonna save you a lot of time when it comes to chopping it down. So I would take lots of little short clips here and there. Sometimes I would set it down and do walk-bys. What you don't see in the videos is me running back to grab the camera after setting it down. I would usually shoot in 30 frames per second at 1080. Sometimes I would do ultra slow-mo as well and time lapses. I would love to have shot in 4K, but the space in my phone was definitely not big enough for it. And then every day or every other day, or just whenever I have some time, a break, lunch time, I would take the SD card out of the camera and put it in the SD reader. And then I would import this footage to my phone just so it's stacking up in there. Okay, here we are. We have our trusty assistant. This is this is the dad, the dad O'Brien. 
here to film the recreation of how to make an episode of a PCT cell video. So, okay, so you're recording there. Yes. So what I do here, you can see here, this is my little tripod. And then if doing vlogging style shots, you can hold it like this. It also opens like this for setting on the ground. So I'm gonna start with an introduction. So, okay. <clears throat> this is day one. Today we are going on an epic adventure of the expedition walking across the garden. And here we go. <laughs> so then I'll usually do a couple of establishing shots, maybe like this here. And then I'll get some walking along shots. Let's see. And then what I'll do is I often do, okay, this is going to show the walking to the camera and walking away from the camera. So for this, we set it up like this. Okay. Yes. Maybe do some other shots like on the grass here. And then do you want to come a bit closer on the side? A bit closer, okay. My ideas, I might document while walking. Today the hike has been going very well. As you can see, the weather is very, very nice. And we've seen some very nice grass. Baltic. As you can see, it's Baltic. <laughs> And we're seeing some nice trees and then for the overlays of the shots I'll maybe do some videos of the sky some videos of the grass videos of the tree nice shot of the tree shot of the dad taking a video <laughs> I'm gonna stop and do some slow mo shots. Okay, pretend it just find my cameras. Okay, and I've just run around and taken a few extra wee interesting shots in the garden, and now I am gonna take the SD card out of the GoPro. Then I'm going to put it into the SD reader. Okay and now the SD card reader is plugged in with the SD in. I can now open up my photos and go to import and here you're going to see all the videos I've just taken on the GoPro and to import these I can select individual ones or now I'm just going to go import all and it can take a little while to import them. And now when you click on your photo album, you're going to see all those videos imported into your phone. Once they are imported, it's going to ask you if you want to keep or delete them. I usually will keep them just as a backup on the SD card. So I'm going to hit keep. And the handy thing is, is when you come back to this screen, it will come up in the already imported section. So you don't end up important twice. Okay, so I'm going to run through how I go by editing these videos. So open up Kind Master. This is the app that I love to use. And then we go to create new. Now we're just going to call this garden day one. Okay. And I like to do it on 16 by nine and we hit create. Okay. You're going to click all and then that's going to bring you to your photo album. Now what you have to do is you have to select one by one so here we go we're gonna add in all the videos that we took today so that's them now all in the timeline you can click this here to go to the beginning okay so i'm gonna be cutting out lots of bits of this that was explaining how i was filming okay <laughs> okay so we're gonna cut this bit out 
and we're gonna go straight to where we're of how to make an episode. This is day one. Okay, so we wanna crop this about here. So usually I would hit split and this is gonna cut that in half and let me delete that. Or you can trim to the left of it. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna get rid of all that. So here you can see. This is day one. Now the clip is cropped to that. Today we are going on an epic adventure of the expedition walking across the garden. And here we go. <laughs> Okay, so I kind of feel like I don't really like that. Here we go. The garden. Bit. So I'm gonna cut it there. So this time I'm gonna hit split and then figure out which bits I want. A couple have in. of establishing shots, maybe like this here. Okay, so I'm going to split this and then delete that bit so it cuts. Yep. Maybe like this here. From there. And then. Okay, and then I'm going to split that again, and then I'm kind of just searching for the parts that I want to keep. So, yeah, I quite like that walking through. So you can see. Yeah, I quite like that. So you can see. And then. So I'm going to cut it there. Okay, and this now is the bit where I was walking towards the camera and away, so. I'm going to start it about there, so I'm going to trim left of that. And then to get this to work quite seamlessly, what I do is as soon as my foot goes out, I'm going to split. And then another thing you can do is you can also drag these edges in to cut it as well so I want to go back in just about there so I'm going to cut that there and then I'm going to test it out okay I'm pretty happy with that and yeah I don't like it to be on too long so I'm going to cut it there I'm going to split it and yeah I, I don't want <laughs> me walking back towards the camera obviously so yeah but there was a wee bit in there where I did the grass quite like that so I'm going to split that there and then this part I'm going to delete. So it goes from that here to the grass, which I quite like, and then split it there. Let's have a look and see what's coming next. It's on the side. Okay, and I'm gonna cut that there. So what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna show you how to do an overlay. So while I'm talking about the sky, the weather, and the trees, I'm going to add a layer. So you can go into layer and then media, all, and then what clip was that again? I need to figure out what clip that was. Okay, and you're gonna see that that goes over the top of the other video and I'm just gonna scale it up. There we go, and I've just scanned through to find the part with the bit where I show the sky. So I'm gonna just trim left of that, and I'm gonna slide this back to where we were. Somewhere around here, okay. So what I forgot to mention was I'm also gonna mute this. So you do that by clicking it and then going to mixer, and then you can just click this button or you can drag it down. We're gonna go with that. See, the weather is. So now, while I'm talking about the weather, I'm going to drag that forward. So it's a little overlay. Weather is very, very nice. And, and then I'm gonna snip that. Very nice grass, as you can see. Okay, and while I'm talking about the grass, I'm going to have that little overlay. And we've seen some very nice grass, as you can see, it's ball thick. Okay, so we're going to split that there. Ball thick. And we've seen some nice trees. And, then... and I'm going to keep that wee bit in there while I'm talking about the trees. And we've seen some nice trees. And then for the overlays of the shop. Okay, and I'm going to cut that. And then for the overlays of the shots. Um, okay, so that's just me talking about the overlays. So, not the dog poo. Another video here. 
Okay, and I like that, so I'm just gonna keep that in. There's not gonna be much of a story to this video, as you can tell, but hey-ho. I'm gonna see some nice tree. Oh, actually, I wanna make that a bit longer. Okay. I'm gonna see some nice trees. Okay, I'm gonna move that overlay there. Trees. Okay, now the slow mo. This is these shots are always really fun. So, okay, now I'm gonna pick apart here. It's gonna be very long because it's very slow, but okay, let's go with this. So, we're gonna delete that extra. We don't need it to be that long, so we'll maybe cut it there. And just for fun, I'll keep this little spinny bit in. So I'll delete that. So as you can tell, it's really just a process of just picking up, picking out parts of the video that you like. Okay, and this was the slow mo video of me and my dad walking. So. Because it's so slow, it's going to take a while to catch up. There we go. Trim left. And then we've got the outro. Okay, so that. So I'm going to just cut off a wee bit of the start there. Okay, so that concludes. I say goodbye. Uh, don't forget to yeah, hit the button and just subscribe. <laughs> Thank you. Like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's quite good. Uh, so I did go out and I took some extra wee shots here. So sometimes I do a couple of establishing shots, some interesting things beforehand. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to move these to the very start. So click and hold and just drag it back. Okay, so I've just moved around some of the videos just to have a couple of establishing shots at the start. As you can see, some of them are very random. And I'm gonna have this fade in from black. So to do that, click the little cog button and then go to video. And then I want this to fade in at the start and fade out at the end. Okay, so I've just gone through the whole project a couple more times and I've made some cuts here and there, shortened things here and there. As you can tell, this stage can take quite a while, especially when you've got hundreds of clips like I tend to do in each episode. But it's not hard, it's just a case of chopping and going back through and just checking that you're happy with. So just before we go into the sound, I'm going to go through a couple of other features that KineMaster has. To access these features, you can click the clip and then you can see here we've already gone through the trim and split. Mixer is sound, which you can click here. That's how you change the sound. Then you can change the speed if you want to slow it down or speed it up. There's also a feature to pan and zoom. You can rotate or mirror the clip and you can also add filters like in here. We can go through say basic here and you can change just like Instagram the filter on the clip. Ooh, that's kind of cool. I never really use these. You can also do some adjusting here of each clip. Like for example, say I want the grass to be a lot brighter. I can go in here and click adjustment, adjustments and I can increase the saturation just to make everything look a bit more colourful. And the vibrance, for example, you can change the brightness, temperature, all that. And you can also apply to all. But I usually don't have time <laughs> to fiddle around with all these settings. But just so you know that they're here, you can add clip graphics. And there's a million other things you can do here. Vignettes, sometimes I like those, but again, I don't usually have time for any of those. But it's worth just going through these settings yourself. Okay, and now for music. So to add music to your clip, you can go to audio 
And then these are the ones that I've added in there in the internal folder. These are all the ones that I got free from YouTube audio library. So yeah, usually what I do is I click on each one, have a listen and see what I think, if it suits it or not. I think that one might make a good intro so I'm gonna put that on okay and it's added in the music here and I'm just gonna adjust the volume because the volume of that is a lot louder than the clip itself this is day one day okay and then the parts where I'm talking what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a volume envelope this is gonna bring down the volume while I'm talking so I add a point here and then around here, I'm going to add another point and I'm going to drop that down quite a bit. So you're going to hear that the volume decreases. This is day one. Today we are going on an epic adventure. Of so that might be a little bit too loud still. So click this to go back to that previous point and I'm going to lower that down a little bit more to about 30%. Today we are going on an epic adventure of the expedition walking across the garden. Okay, and then here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring that right back up again. There. Across the garden. Okay, and what I forgot to add in is transitions. Again, it's something that I don't tend to have time for while I'm editing on trail. But just to show you how that works, you click the little plus bit. I tend to use a simple crossfade one, which is in classic transition. So I would just click that and then you're gonna see that blends very nicely together. But I quite often just prefer it when it just cuts, but I'll add a few in here just for an example. Okay, and another thing that I tend to do is I usually will add in a title with the day number. So let's just pick a random place just to show you as an example. So you go to layer, then you go to text and let's write day one. Here we go. So I would usually make that a lot bigger and you can do different things with text because that doesn't really stand out very well. I would usually put an outline to it just like that and then I would put some in animation I would fade it in and I would fade it out so this is a pretty basic title but again I'm just trying to save time while editing on trail okay just before we go to export here I'm just gonna save a still from this that we'll use later when creating the YouTube thumbnail so to do this click that little button and then we're gonna go capture and save so that's just going to take almost like a screenshot of that little clip there. Okay, and now we're going to export it. So to do this, click this little top right button here. And I tend to knock that up to high. And 1080, 30 frames per second, H264 tends to be the one I go for. Then we're going to hit save. So this can take a while depending on how long it is. This is day one. Today we are going on an epic adventure of the expedition walking across the garden. very well as you can see the weather is very very nice and we've seen some very nice grass as you can see it's Baltic <laughs> and we've seen some nice trees shot of the dad taking a video <laughs>
another episode of Expedition Walking Across the Garden. We hope you enjoyed the episode. Special yes. thanks to Dad O'Brien. Thank you. Second cameraman. And do you want to say goodbye? Uh, don't forget to uh, hit the button and su subscribe. <laughs> Thank you. Like, comment and subscribe. <laughs>
basically everyone, but there is one person, the only time I forgot to ask, he did come up to me after and I said, would you mind not filming me or put me on the internet? And then I felt really bad because I hadn't asked him. He was like the only one I'd forgotten to ask as well. So not everyone wants a camera shoved in their face, so be sure to ask that they're okay with it. Also, I recommend experimenting with, you know, if you're using GoPro, try the different features, try the time lapses, try the night time lapses, try filming in slow mo. Um, yeah, just for a bit of variation. But yeah, I would say one downside of filming and editing on Trial, aside from the fact that it is hard work, is that the quality, yeah, like I said, it's never going to be what it could be on a computer. Um, not just the editing, but the export quality for me, I'm still trying to find a way of exporting it to look a little bit better. Um, I wasn't fully happy with the quality of the exports. But overall, for it being done on a phone, it was pretty good. I'm definitely still learning and hoping to improve my processes, so I'm completely open to suggestions from you all. If you have any tips yourselves, if you've edited and filmed on trail, I'd love to hear them. Um, I re was really happy with my overall setup. I think Kind Master's great, I love Canva. It was all fairly smooth. Um, yeah, but I would love to hear from you. I think I'm gonna try experiment with some other softwares just in the next year uh, before my next through hike. And yeah, I'm just always learning. Um, so that is all for this video. I hope that was useful. And yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.